Oh, God, he's killing he's himself! Killing himself. Oh, Welcome back, everyone, to our channel. I'm Stoner. And I'm Lush. This is Stoner and Lush, baby. Today, we're going to talk about fear and loathing in Las Vegas. 1999, written by Hunter S. Thompson, Terry Gilliam, Tony Grissoni. Directed by Terry Gilliam. This film stars Johnny Depp, Benicio del Toro, and Tobey Maguire, just to name a few, because there is there's so many cameos in this, and yes. it's fantastic. This writer and his lawyer are headed to Las Vegas to cover a sporting event for the magazine that the writer writes for, and but. You know, they they partake in a lot of illegal substances. We had two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, also a quarter tequila, quarter rum, case of beer, pint of raw ether, two dozen amyl. Before, on the drive there, during, and after, I don't know how they got away with this stuff, but I mean, hey, it was what, late 60s, early 70s during this? Yeah, I guess you could get away at destroying a whole hotel room and not paying for it and leaving uh, back then. Uh, that's basically the, the movie in a nutshell. It's it's the, the visuals and everything that makes this what it is. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly, I I think this film is okay. <laughs> it's not one of my favorites. I love the fact that it's, it's more of like an art piece to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I just got more of that feeling when I was watching it this time around. It's definitely different than any movie that was made around that time. Yeah. It, it's just one of those ones. It's definitely a cult classic. And it's very off the wall. Like, I mean, to like, I don't know if it, in reality these things really happen the way it's shown in the movie i think I, I mean i'm pretty sure hunter when he wrote it he was feeding off of like what he had taped what he did remember of the trip uh what came back to him later on when he wrote the book um he may be have embellished but you know what uh, he's lived a pretty crazy life so he may not have embellished that much uh they may have just did that for the movie to for visualizations like when they're in the bar and you see him uh they're all lizards, and someone is feeding these goddamn things booze. See, it won't be long now till they tear us to shreds. You know, See, uh, that is the stuff I like about this movie. It's just the way that he delivers it so choppy and, and with an exclamation point, with everything. So, like, he's questioning, but still exclamation point. Yeah, like that's the shit that cracks me up about this movie. Just the way it's like, deliver to you. <laughs> he became a conductor. You know, <laughs> I would read, you know. You know, I'd read and he'd go, yes, that's good. Let's go down. Slow down. <laughs> back up. Okay, now hit it there. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so basically, he, Hunter taught me how he wanted his work read. And uh, which is a, I mean, if there's anything such as a blessing, that was it. <laughs> and sorry. Like, and, and like, I, I watched the special features afterwards, and there's, uh, there's, um, Part of it is Hunter S. Thompson being on set while they're making it. And his mannerisms and the way he's talking, I'm like, he's not even messed up right now. I mean, he might be a little, he, like, he always had a drink in his hand, but he didn't seem like he was all high and stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I can see, like, Johnny Depp does such a good job at portraying that. But if you have not seen these special features, guys, you should look it up on YouTube. It's really fascinating to see him on set and, uh, and and you know kind of talking them along doing doing what uh what's going to be in the scene and stuff uh, <laughs> based on his well, book and and somewhat memory i've never read the book but many people that see the movie and that have read the book said the movie is okay but the book is amazing so i don't know i'll probably never get my hands on a copy of it but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll read it. <laughs> um, I believe they reissued it after the movie came out with the movie cover on the book. Because a lot of the dialogue in the movie is straight from the book. 
because there's dialogue in the book and they basically just took it right those lines out and used them in 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 the movie oh and the the lady from who's the boss was in there the grandma and the she's a checkout hotel lady right and yeah when she like gets when he sees her and she morphs she kind of looks like roz from um monsters inc i'm watching you azaski always watching <laughs> And he's like, he's like, what's the score here? He's like, yeah, it's okay. so creepy. Like that part was like, oh my god, it's Roz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, the, the soundtrack to this, of course, I'm gonna love because it's all older music, and yeah. I don't care how many times I hear White Rabbit, but I'm really gonna blame that song is always gonna be yes. And I will yes. Close your in eyes. here in the tub with me yeah, with boy. White Rabbit Pink. Yeah, I. I Okay, Benicio del Toro, he's a pretty good actor, but in this, he, I know he was playing a character that had to be like that, but it, I was just like, punch this guy in the face, please throw that toaster in there, or that radio in there, whatever it was, please throw that radio in there, but it, it's, ugh, I don't know. Yeah, he's not really a character that you like right. so much in this, um, like and jerk. I, and I think, I think that's just kind of the way the real gonzo was um i mean he calls him gonzo but he also calls it gonzo journalism so i'm, I'm not sure like what what that exactly means but i think he must must have been really like that and you can see photos of hunter s and him sitting at a table and hunter s is wearing like the same get up he's wearing as johnny depp is wearing that photo is quite famous on on you know i'm sure if if you're a fan of it you've seen the photo i'm sure <laughs> But they, uh, I think they did a really good job of, of making them look like the tr- true characters. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that the movie is very visually stunning. Like, I love how at the beginning it's very kind of bright and vibrant. You know, they're in the desert and it's sunny and it's nice out. And then finally when they get to Vegas, that's when everything starts to get like, yes, there's lights everywhere, but it starts to get darker. As the more more drugs they take, the more messed up they get, the 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 tone changes and even when they're like once they're at the second hotel and they get rid of Christina Ricci's character and then when he wakes up and the floor is covered in water and he's got the tape thing strapped to him he's got a you know dinosaur dinosaur sword tail stuck to him and like and he's playing back and he's like visualizing the things that he had seen over the last little bit um <laughs> like how dark and De- decrepit it all gets but then the end of the movie and driving back on the desert again he's trying to get him to the airplane and and then of course the very end scene where johnny's driving and he's like like right up close to the camera kind of thing driving like back to la uh it's all bright and kind of stuff again like oh this was their dark time you know during the the crazy drug drug nights and then as he's coming down from those drugs everything's kind of opening up and getting bright again you know that aesthetic to it okay so the first fun fact i have is probably the most well known is that hunter s thompson shaved johnny depp's head to match him but yeah. all the pictures that i have found he had a razor in his hand now i could have sworn that the the story started out with like a bowie knife that's that's how I've heard it as well. Right. I I'm thinking I'm thinking when they first met, maybe he used the Bowie knife, but then when it came to the film, he used a razor, perhaps. Maybe he did it twice. I I don't know. But like maybe that's just a rumor, like because yeah, exactly. I've, I've seen the photo as well, and I'm like, that's not a knife. That's not a knife. That's a knife. That's that's a razor. Uh, I've always heard it being a knife. Originally, Martin Scorsese, and at one point, and Oliver Stone at one point, were both tried to get this movie made and off the ground. Oh. Um, did not work out for either of them. Now, how different would the movie have been with them directing? Scorsese uh, probably, right? like, I'm not gonna say probably. Scorsese would have hit it out of the park. I love him. I love him. But Oliver Stone's, like, you know, his natural born killers, his his uh, the door, you know. I, visualization I, 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 in that movie okay. would fit well in this movie as well you know that style 
Yeah, natural born killers and this style as it is now, yes. Yeah. For Sazy, that uh, that would have been. I probably would have liked it a lot more. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. And they did have a few different actors, like almost paired up to be, uh, you know, uh, Ral Duke and and Gonzo. Um, uh, so one of the first pairings they thought they would do was Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando together. Jack. Right. Wow. That would. Been- I think that would be more under of a Scorsese style. With them, I think it would have. Been, I mean, I, I don't know. I love Johnny Depp, but maybe it was just because I don't like Benicio's character. Right. You know, yeah. I, like, Fucking throw that radio in that tub, please. <laughs> um, the second pairing they talked about was Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Yes. Yes. I think I remember hearing something about that. Um, that would have been good. <laughs> Um, and the third pairing that they, uh, or no, sorry, it's, this isn't a pairing. These are two that were both considered to play Ral Duke. Um, and it was a John Cusack was one choice. Okay. And John Malkovich was another. Okay. Yeah. Um, I still, I still go for Johnny Depp. Benicio Del Toro actually gained 45 pounds in nine weeks for this role. By eating most of a uh, largely part of his diet was donuts. I, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> can you imagine being an actor having to gain and lose, lose and gain constantly? I, that would just wear me like, down. Be everywhere. That's great. <laughs> oh, um, this is probably another reason why Johnny Depp allowed uh, Hunter S. Thompson to shave his head and why his mannerisms were so good. Depp lived with him for four months prior to this. Uh, so he, he got to see him every day. They him. together. So, okay, uh, okay. so he very quickly got to learn how he talks, how he walks, how he... You know, they probably got messed up a lot of times, and Johnny was probably keying into how he moves when he's messed up and whatnot. So uh, that's pretty, it's pretty getting into your character, I'd say. Um, yeah. Uh, my next fun fact is a lot of Depp's clothes and a lot of the props that they used, like radios and this and that and stuff, um, were all actually hunters. And he brought them in to be used all his clothing for Johnny to wear, uh, you know, or at least the majority of it from, from what I gather. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool because that makes it way more authentic. That's why that picture looks so much like what Johnny's wearing because it's actually Hunter S. Thompson's clothes. Now, during the special features that I watched, there's, and when Hunter was on set, but there's a certain part of that where in the movie where Johnny Depp sees an older Hunter sitting there, and he's like, that's me. And he gets right close and looks at himself and it shows how that scene was completely made and wh- wh- how Hunter talked about doing the scene and, and how Johnny should react to seeing himself and stuff because he'd probably seen himself in his mind before. That's why it's in there. Um, I just thought that uh, that's really fun to watch. So yeah. and something you guys yeah. should go look up. And my last fun fact. Now this I did not know, but Terry Gilliam got the script 10 years prior to making the movie and turned it down because he was making something else at the time. He didn't have the time to do it. The movie, since it didn't get off the ground right away, eventually he was able to say yes to doing it. So I thought that was kind of a fun fact Uh, that the original person before going to Martin Scorsese and, and Oliver Stone, who for some reason couldn't get the movie off the ground, Terry did. So, wasn't meant to be. I get though, right? <laughs> <laughs> this movie's okay. I mean, it's entertaining. It has a bunch of weird stuff going on constantly and it makes you go, what the heck is going on? But it's just not my kind of high. You know, it's yeah. just not my 
So for that, I'm giving it a 2.8. I, I mean, I, I give it low because when I was watching it, I couldn't wait to be done with it. <laughs> like wow. now, it just okay. didn't, it just lost some momentum for me. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4.7. This is one <laughs> of my favorite, like, favorite movies as a teenager. The, and the only reason it's really like not a five is it's just a little too long. Yeah, it does drag a little. A little too long. Next, we are going to be talking about Natural Born Killers. <laughs> That's we another talked one. a little about it today. Yes. That's a good way for that. <laughs> it's another one of John's favorites. I have to get my favorites in here once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, oh, okay, sure. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> and we, we might have a special guest for next week's episode as well. Yes. So hopefully. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, tell us what you guys think of Fear and Loathing Las Vegas and if there's any fun facts that we missed that you guys want to share with us. And don't forget to madness. like, I subscribe, like comment, hit that notification bell. And, and until like, next time, guys. Bye. Life experience, I think we cannot not talk about Hunter Thompson. Oh. And, and um, yes, we talk about, yeah. 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 He, did, he, he deserved it. Thank you. <laughs>